end of November, the Rhodesian Air Force celebrated its 25th anniversary. At an impressive ceremony at Government House Salisbury, the Prime Minister and Mrs. Smith were among the guests who watched the President, the Honourable Clifford DuPont, present colours to the Air Force. The Air Force returned the compliment in traditional style. Rhodesia salutes the Air Force, 25 years old in 1972. from England are the Royal Rhodesian Air Force's first Canberra bombers. Long-range, high-speed jet aircraft, which will give the Air Force far greater striking power should it ever be needed. The Rhodesian crews were welcomed on arrival by His Excellency the Governor-General, Lord Dalhousie, and by the Federal Prime Minister, Sir Roy Walensky. In charge of the flight was squadron leader C.H. Paxton, who paid tribute to the aircraft and the Rhodesian crews who flew them. The Canberra is a particularly compact fighting machine with little room left for comfort and luxury. They're fitted with ejection seats, but after inspecting one, the PM seemed to say, oh, oh, not for me, I'll stick to driving locomotives. One of the smartest units in Salisbury's parade in honour of the Queen's birthday was the RRAF Volunteer Reserve, mostly men who served in the forces during the last war and who were always available at short notice to back up the regular element of the force. Old sweats they may be, but there was no resting on their laurels. Many hours of drilling got them into fine shape for the big parade. Reserve technicians attend lectures to keep them up to date with the latest developments in aircraft. There were no ejector seats when these chaps were in the regulars, but they still have to gen up on them. You press the button and whoops, she goes. Many of the technicians have been in other branches of the forces, but the reserve happily accepts them as long as they know something about engines or radio, among other things. In fact, the reserve is at the moment making a drive for more recruits. The men get training in every department of the Air Force so they can be fully operative immediately in case of an emergency. The reserve was formed only in 1960, but already has squadrons at Salisbury, Bulawayo, Lusaka, Amtali, Guello and Indola. Hmm, slightly different from trying to teach the missus to park the car in the garage. And here's a little exercise which is not only a good excuse for a swim, but could come in very useful if a crew is shot down over the sea, drink or ogging, to borrow a senior service expression. The dinghy will inflate automatically, but it may be upside down. And it's no mean feat to get it right way up and then get into it. Somehow though, it's difficult to imagine these chaps being caught up a creek without a paddle. Five hundred men and six squadrons of the Royal Rhodesian Air Force paraded at Thornhill, Guello to bid farewell to the Chief of Air Staff, Air Vice Marshal E.W.S. Jacklin. After 25 years in the RRAF, he retires on August the 1st to take up an appointment with an aircraft manufacturing group in Johannesburg. Air Vice Marshal Jacklin acknowledges the salute of the unit in whose formation he has played such a significant role, having been appointed its first Chief of Air Staff in 1956, when it was separated from the Army in recognition of its development as a first-class, self-contained fighting force. Warming up for the ceremonial flight past, the Air Force's traditional method of paying tribute to an honoured guest are squadrons of Canadairs, Canberra Jet Bombers, Provosts, Dakotas, Pembrokes and Vampires.
Commenting on his retirement at the early age of 44, Air Vice Marshal Jacqueline said that the Air Force was a young man's service. And here the young men of today's Air Force bid farewell and Godspeed, and with it a nation's gratitude to the RRAF's first commanding officer. carried out by African troops of the Northern Rhodesia Regiment was one of the attraction staged for the Broken Hill Festival fortnight. It's about time the PBI came in for a spot of credit and with its support weapons pounding away and air support when necessary, the attack went steadily forward. These weapons may appear to be things of the past, but until the ghastly effects of atomic warfare are let loose on the world, it will still be the infantry who turn the scale. The more spectacular event of this festival attraction was staged by the Royal Rhodesian Air Force, who put up some terrific formation plants. <laughs> to give the crowd a good look, a Canberra bomber came in low with flaps down pretty near stalling speed. These wonder aircraft smashed numerous records. And if there's anything better than a camper, it's four cameras. 